Hey guys, Justin Hawkins with Smooth Bass Baits, formerly DIY bass fishing tips and techniques. We've found a, a direction we want to take our channel now, so that's the reason for the name change. Tonight we have a video coming up that's, that will give you an idea of where we want to head with, with our channel and what we want to bring to you guys content-wise. Um, we love the fishing videos, we're going to keep making the fishing videos. We love to catch fish, we love to catch big fish, so we want to show you how we do it. We've taught ourselves how to do this. We definitely are not professionals by any means, but we have, we have a lot of passion and we put our heart into it. So I think you guys will get something out of it. Tonight, we're taking a piece of driftwood that Melissa had found. And we're cutting it down and shaping it, turning it into a crankbait, which we've done a, a few times. We caught some big fish with them and we caught a lot of fish with them. So, you know, there's a few guys out there that want to know how to do this and want to customize their lures and, and make them their own, then uh, you know, I hope you subscribe to us and, and watch what we have to bring you. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, we enjoy making it and we appreciate all the support we can get. No, I'm not going crazy, but lately my head and my heart seem to be at least a Says we run. It's like my heart is too afraid to tell my head when it's done. I know that it can never be the way it was. Even though you be the death of me, I can't give you up. Too much is not enough. It's not the love. It's not the lust that grips me. It must be the whiskey. So here we are getting ready to cut the piece of driftwood and shape it to whatever lure we want to make. I want to get a video of catching the fish on this lure after we get finished making it. So with it being winter time, and I kind of wanted to make a jerk bait, but I uh, decided to make a square bill because I've had a, more luck on a square bill than I have a jerk bait lately. Uh, hopefully that doesn't change by the time the lure is made. We're going to make it rather large for video purposes so you guys will get a good idea of what we're doing and be able to see what we're doing. Here I'm trimming the excess wood so it'll save time carving later and save my, save my hands, keep, keep them from hurting too bad. I checked the wood after I cut a few pieces off to make sure it was solid on the inside. You don't want to get a piece of rotten wood and spend a lot of time making a lure on something that's just going to tear apart in the end. There's probably a better way to do this. A scroll saw or band saw would definitely be easier. Uh, I had a miter saw set up on the table, so that's what we used. Uh, and if you decide to use a miter saw, please be careful. Um, I've had pieces shoot out the back and come close to hitting me before so you know where I eye protection hearing protection uh, try not to do what you see in the video So the next part of this video is really important. What I'm doing here is after I've got the rough shape of the lure, I'm going to take some measurements and find true center of the lure. Symmetry is really important when it comes to making crankbaits and jerkbaits and whatnot. Uh, it, it affects everything as far as the lure goes, uh, the way it moves and how deep it'll go. Uh, it's best to keep it as symmetrical as possible. You know, I've made some that weren't very symmetrical and they caught a lot of fish you know it gives the gives the lure that that different look i guess but if you ever wanted to make one and then recreate it down the road it's better to make it symmetrical that way you have something to go off of um, you could write your measurements down and keep a record and keep track of what you're doing Here I'm just adding control lines. This will give me an idea of where I'm at as I shape the lure. Now 
I usually just freehand my designs, um, the shape of my lures. I've seen guys on YouTube and on other channels that they'll print out pictures of maybe pictures they've drawn, pictures they haven't drawn, I'm not sure. And then they'll take that and glue it to the wood and shape it that way, which is a great idea. I just don't have the patience to do it, I guess, or I feel confident enough that I could, I could draw one by hand. Here I added a second control line, a horizontal to go with the vertical. You'll notice as I go through the video and shape the lure that sometimes I remove the control line to get the shape I want. And I always try to go back and get that control line back as soon as possible. That way I don't lose where I'm at or have any confusion of where I'm at. So the length of time it takes to shape a lure will vary um, depending on what kind of wood you're using. Um, sometimes I can do one in 20 minutes. Sometimes it takes an hour or more. I've used a few different kinds of wood. I've used cherry, poplar, walnut. Um, I took the, the support off a pallet board. That's what I made my first crankbait with. And I think I've caught fish on all of them or most of them. I have used balsa wood. I've made some nice lures out of them. Um, I tend to lean more towards the denser types of wood. I think, you know, when you can get that bait to suspend or come close to suspending at least, you uh, tend to get more strikes in my opinion. Once I get the lure close to where I want it, I'll start sanding it. I uh, usually start with 150 just to smooth it out. And then I like to go to an 800 to a 1200 just to kind of polish it up and it feels like it gives it a, a harder exterior. I use a 1 16th inch drill bit to set my line ties and my hooks. Um, I ordered some off the internet. I've used the screw in eyes and they worked pretty good. Um, right now I just use Eagle Claw hooks from Walmart. I'll cut the bend in the barb off and take the shank and notch it with the cutting pliers. And I set it with crazy glue. Um, and with that and a layer of epoxy over it, I've never had one pull out on a fish. I usually use Helmsman to seal the lure. My wife had used the Helmsman this evening and we were out of it. 
on one of her projects so i'm using crazy glue to seal it as well and it, it works great it actually works faster than helmsman but um the helmsman seems to be a little easier and gives a better coverage on the lure as far as paints go i uh, use creatix paints that's what i started with i ordered it off amazon and ordered the airbrush off amazon i think it was 25 bucks and the paints aren't aren't that expensive either uh, they also carry them at hobby lobby and if you can't find that or you want to use something different uh, like a, a lacquer oil base then uh, you go to michael's or pretty much any hobby or craft store uh, i like to use the water-based paints because it's not as toxic i guess or doesn't smell as bad when you're using it stink the place up and uh, the water-based paints are very durable uh, you know like i said when you seal it and top coat it and get a good epoxy resin over the top of it they um, they work great i'm adding an iridescent pigment to the paint as well i got it from michael's with a kit and the color it gives the lure the shine is amazing i could not say more about it 